Hi, welcome to Hospitality Live with Rupesh. Each week, we feature an industry leader that will share the latest trends and the best strategies to help you grow. Now, welcome your host, Rupesh Patel. Good morning. Good morning. Hey guys, welcome to the show. This is episode number 62. I can't believe it's already 62 and it's November. Guys, this year has just flown by and it's already November. Today's November 4th. Guys, welcome to the show. This is episode number 62, Road to Recovery. We have the CEO of Virgin Hotels and he's going to talk about hospitality, mindset, leadership, resilience. We're talking everything hospitality today. I'm super excited about this because uh, we were going to have them earlier on this summer and things just happen and, you know, things in the hospitality, things happen every single day and we have to jump off and jump back on. So he, we're, we have him back on. I'm excited about this. Guys, learn at what hotel or what Virgin Hotels does to create memorable experiences, create ways to become a better leader, a stronger leader at your hotel. If you're a GM, you want to be a, a GM. If you're anybody working in a hotel, this episode is for you because we're going to get through how Virgin Hotels, how Raul, the CEO of Virgin Hotels, is getting through what we're going through right now. And it's been very difficult for all of us. And I hear it every single day. And the election just happened yesterday. And we're still waiting for all of the results. So I'm excited about what's going to happen for the future. And I think there is definitely a future for hospitality. It's just we got to keep going. So I'm super excited about that. Guys, this episode is brought to you. And guys, let us know. Before the end of the show, we're going to be giving away a $50 gift card to Amazon, courtesy of smartguests.com. Somebody, listen, every week, no, actually, you know what? Today, I have it up, smartguests.com, boom, boom, right there, somewhere right there, <laughs> right there, guys, so hit up smartguests.com, and by the way, the website is down this morning due to uh, maintenance, but it will be back up in the next hour or so. Definitely, somebody put in the comments, smartguests.com. And good morning to everybody that's watching. Guys, increase your guest service satisfaction, get more reviews, and there's over 50 tools on smartguests.com. Simple tools that can get you more reviews, get your team engaged, and build that loyalty that you need right now uh, for those guests to come back and post a review. All of these tools are available, customized right on smartguests.com. Thank you so much to Smart Guests for tuning or for sponsoring the show. And I'm excited about that. Guys, let me just see where everybody's watching from. I see people from all over the place. Guys, welcome to the show. Welcome. All right, we got uh, Orlando in the house, hometown, Jacksonville, Fargo, North Dakota, uh, Tampa, Orlando. Guys, let us know. We're giving away a $50 gift card. Texas, Green Bay, woohoo! Daytona Beach, Chattanooga, Maryland. I know there's somebody watching internationally, guys. Comment, let us know where you're watching from. We've had people from like all over the world watch. So I'm excited about that. Thank you so much to people posting smartguests.com. Uh, appreciate that. And all right, Palm Springs in the house. Guys, welcome to the show. All right, so every week I have a mindset. And you know what happened to my dad on 23rd of October, the day before my birthday. He passed. And he passed from COVID and passed from the uh, complications of COVID, which is pneumonia, uh, fibers of the lungs, uh, just all these things that he could not recover. So I said this from day one, we all have to take care of each other. We have to take care of people that are maybe having underlying conditions and all of those things. And and guys, I want to post this up real quick. This Sunday, my sister flew down again. She's been down here for, the, for three, sort of third time coming down now in the last couple of weeks. Uh, once for him to see, you know, say goodbye to him at the hospital, then once at the funeral, and then she came down again on Sunday. Um, and she doesn't live here. She lives out of town, so she did fly in. And guess what? She felt safe. So travel is still there as long as you're safe and you're keeping yourself safe and you're keeping others safe too by keeping a mask on and distancing, right? Here's a video of actual, and I haven't shared this anywhere. This is like exclusive to you guys. Um, this is a video of us doing the um, ashes and we're scattering ashes in the Atlantic Ocean. And this is what my dad wants. This is what we do religiously as a Hindu um, culture. And Yesterday, I spent seven hours doing a, uh, a ceremony uh, with my family and um, and kind of continuing his memory on and kind of passing on what we talk about his soul. So, you know, this week's mindset is just please take care of yourself. You know, as we've had a lot of friends 
uh, and doctors too that have been, you know, infected with COVID. Luckily, they've all got better. So I just want everybody to take care of each other right now and take care of yourself because it has been so difficult for us, our family, the last two months that you know we've had to go through this because both my parents got COVID. My mom. Uh, recovered. And by the way, next week is our last chemotherapy session that my dad was taking care of her, uh, taking to her to every three weeks, right? And so it's been very difficult for us. And um, so I want everybody to take care of themselves and take care of each other and, and just keep it going, right? Um, and thank you so much for all your support, all the comments, all the messages that you sent me. I think I had over 2,000 messages last week. It was my birthday, so I guess LinkedIn sends you a notification saying it's your birthday, and then people start sending messages. I'm gonna get through. I'm gonna reply to every single one of them in the next week or so. So, guys, if you sent me.
Let's see if we can get everybody back on. Oh my God. I don't know. Sorry guys. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Yes. We are back on. I don't know. It was like me talking about something and maybe something happened. Guys, I'm so sorry. Hang on a second, Sarah. Uh, Hi, can you hear me? Be on because I can't, I guess we're not going to be able to control it. I don't, I don't know. I guess we're back on. Hey, is everybody on? I'm on. I want you. Well, listen, we're going to have to continue with the show. I try. I don't know what happened to my internet connection. It just dropped out. Everything dropped out. Well, hey, I hope everybody's, I, get, I hope somebody's still on watching the show. I think they are. Guys, mm -hmm. comment. Let me know if you're actually watching. And I'm sorry. The internet connection just dropped out. I try to connect to my phone and everything, and it just, ooh, just dropped out. It, it, it's the election. It's got to be the election. <laughs> Sarah, I, what do you think? You think it's the election? <laughs> uh, it's that. Or Mercury just is no longer in retrograde, but that doesn't That's count. That's right. Thank God. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, we're, we were going to get into the whole mindset uh, thing with my dad. We've already passed that now. So let us let me see what I can see if I can just refocus myself. This is what happens in hotels. Guys, comment and let me know if you're still here. Hit the like button so we see that you're here. And because I, I can't see anything in the, in, the, in the comments. And let me know. Guys, we're still giving away a $50 gift card to Amazon.com. So please comment and let us know that you're here and then where you're watching from so we can continue the show. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what happened to the internet, but hey, look what we have on the show. It's Raul Liao and Sarah Dandishi. And Sarah, let's get on with the Hospitality Minute. Hospitality minute. Let me pull it up. Hang on. Hi, I'm Sarah Dandishi from Ask the Concierge. Every week, I'll be sharing the latest hospitality and travel news and updates in a segment we like to call Hospitality Minutes. All right, Sarah, tell us what's going on in hospitality and let us know what we, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, what we, let me see if we pull it up. There it is. There it is. So much happening this what morning. What we need to learn right now in, in the hotel space and travel. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but well, by the way, first of all, thank you so much for sharing your experience that you did uh, with your family this weekend. That was really beautiful to hear. So, um, but let's hop into the hospitality minute. Um, okay. So lots of interesting things going on. I know that we've all been focused on other things, but there's still activity happening in the hospitality and travel space. So um, a couple of things that I will touch on, uh, we'll be talking uh, a little bit diving into Four Seasons and what they have going on with their private homes business, as well as Qantas Airlines, the cruise industry. There's been so much back and forth with that, as well as uh, ending on a happy note, five ways that hotels are giving back to their communities during the pandemic. So I figured we'd end off happy. So first off, let's dive into the Four Seasons. So um, depending on how familiar you are with the company, they actually have had for at least 20 years now, a part of their business that's called private homes. Um, and it's proving to be a very integral part of their pandemic strategy. So a lot of us might be hearing about Marriott, for example, talking about their homes and villas by Marriott International. Uh, certainly, obviously, Airbnb had a plus product as well, too. But Four Seasons actually had this going on all of these years. So they've re they're really kind of doubling down on it. And What's a little bit different for them? Um, it's uh, it's called private retreat. Is they only really have seven hundred and fifty properties, so it is very curated, um, and their properties are all. Uh, very integrated to their actual Four Seasons hotels. So it's nice that they're basically able to offer these homes as an additional option. Uh, and then you kind of get those certain standards that you would normally get at a hotel. So uh, really interesting that that's sort of been in their back pocket this whole time. And they're certainly doubling down on that. Um, so moving on, Qantas, I heard about this over the weekend and definitely it's like, what does Australia know that we don't know? But Qantas just announced that they are closing bookings on U.S. and U.K. flights until October 2021. Now, way back a couple months ago, they had uh, first announced really before anybody else that they weren't doing uh, flights to the U.S., or even the UK until March of 2021. And I know that that was at that time seems so far away. And now they've actually gone ahead and extended it. So hoping that maybe these, uh, maybe some travel bubbles might actually end up opening up in the coming months. But that's kind of what we're looking at right now. Um, the US, so for you cruisers out there, uh, there has been so much back and forth regarding the cruise industry. So the first thing 
that we um, basically in March, the CDC had put out a no sale um, suspension on U.S. sailings, and that was supposed to expire at the end of October. Well, then we were coming towards the end of October. What do we do? What do we do? Do they extend not? They ended up opening up and so allowing U.S. sailings. But the key thing with that is that they had a lot of different requirements. Of course, that came out Friday, we were still waiting to hear on what the cruise lines would actually say. And now they've come out and said, um, it's actually the Cruise Lines International Association has said that members will will continue to be suspended until at least the end of the year, which just lets us know that, you know, obviously the cruise lines really want to make sure that they have the right protocols in place. And then ending on a happy note, because <laughs> uh, it's been a very interesting sort of um, a couple of weeks five ways that the hotels are giving back to their communities during the pandemic. Um, and I'm just going to touch on a couple of these. By no means are these the only ways that hotels are giving back. And if you guys are giving back in any different ways, please share that because I know that we could all use a little bit of positivity. Um, but Wyndham Resorts, for example, they are awarding 45,000 essential workers with a free night. Um, and that's, you know, again, it's just a simple way to give back, but love that they are, they have been giving back and they actually have their ongoing Hashtag Everyday Heroes campaign. MGM Resorts as well too. They're partnering with UNLV to provide free tutoring. Choice Hotels and Barclays are donating to the American Red Cross. And then AC Hotels in Northern California are doing linens with love. They are giving linens to those that, um, those professionals that were helping with the wildfires. And then the fifth thing, Hyatt Place and Hyatt House, Chicago um, Medical University District, they are recognizing healthcare workers as well too. I give that a bell, Sarah. You've been okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Well, that is all. Thank you so much, Sarah. And um, I'm, I apologize for all the confusion this morning as we get through all of this. Um, Thanksgiving's coming up in a couple of weeks. Are you traveling? Currently, I am planning to travel to go visit family in Pennsylvania. So we will see if that ends up happening, but that is the plan for now. Absolutely. Well, hey, Sarah, always awesome to have you on. Where can people find you? Uh, you guys can find me online everywhere at Ask a Concierge. Uh, also, my website, askaconcierge.tv, or connect with me here on LinkedIn at Sarah Dandishi. Hit her up on Instagram and that gram and YouTube. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere, Sarah. See you next week. Definitely. Thanks so much. Have fun. Bye. All right, guys. All right. So, on with the show. Guys, comment. Let us know where you're watching from because I lost all of my all of my chats when I lost connection earlier on. And so I don't know where people are watching from. And guess what? We're giving away a $50 gift card. All right, so our featured guest, I've been wanting to have him on the show. And I know a lot of people are excited to have him on the show to hear his story and hear his background and maybe share some inside scoops on what's going on at their brand. Uh, it's He's the CEO of the Virgin Hotels. And I'm super excited to bring him on. Let's bring him on right now. Raul Liao, welcome to the show. Hey, happy to be here for the uh, 60 second show. Awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. It just dropped right out. And I'm like, and earlier on before the show, I was like, hey, Raul, your, your connection doesn't look good. And then all of a sudden, mine turned around to uh, just go to nowhere. But you know what? This is what we do in hospitality. We have backups. We do, we have right. a third backup, and I connected to everything. And got us back up and now we're back on track right welcome to the show um you know you you lead a great brand a, a a fun brand and i know a lot of people are excited to hear about your brand um how what's going on at virgin right now as far as the hospitality space well i'll tell you about that in a minute but look i, I do want to i do want to thank you for all your amazing amazing positivity i mean during everything that you and your family have been through during this time i mean it's uh you know, your, cur your courage is amazing, and, and thanks, thanks for inspiring the rest of us. It's it's ter tremendous. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we just got to keep going. That's all we can do. We can't look we can't do. Up and, you know, got, give up. Got to look to the future, not, not one step backwards. But, uh, I mean, look, we're continuing to, to add hotels. We, you know, we opened, uh, we opened Nashville, you know, earlier this year, which is just really spectacular. You know, we're a little behind schedule. We were, you know, when we started the year, like everybody else, we were on pace to open about seven or eight hotels in the next 12 months at that point. But it's been slowed down a bit and not pushed into next year. But our next, you know, our next big opening is, uh, is Las Vegas, which uh, I think we're targeting middle of January right now, if, if, if COVID allows us. 
Sure. But it's one of the few projects that actually was on schedule and the, the construction continued, you know, pretty well out there. Then we have, uh, you know, right after that, a couple of months after that, we have a beautiful place in New Orleans opening on Baron Lafayette, which is going to be one of my favorites, actually. It's just a beautiful hotel and a, and a great location. Then New York. Uh, New York was originally targeted. It's on 29th and Broadway. We were targeting to open that actually in December of this year. But, you know, all the openings and closing and it's a it's a massive hotel. It's 500 rooms with lots of incredible spaces, food and beverage, a rooftop, a third and fourth floor that's really activated. So uh, we're excited about that. Then we have right after that our, our first international property coming on which is uh, this incredible castle looking thing in, in Edinburgh on Victoria Street, right where uh, Harry Potter was filmed. So those are the, you know, the imminent openings and some things we've moved back into, into 2022. We have a, a project in Philadelphia that we haven't announced yet, but we're going to be announcing soon and also another international project as well that's coming on. So, uh, I mean, we're, we're keeping busy. It's messing up our schedule, a little bit of the openings of the hotels, but uh, you know, so far so good. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, I was, uh, I follow, and by the way, guys, let me know if somebody follows Richard Branson and Ronald. I follow both of you guys, and you guys are definitely inspirational to all of us because I see all the fun that you have. And, you know, your brand at Virgin Hotels is just a fun brand. Actually, all the brands around Virgin are just having yeah. fun, right? No doubt. And it's ever since brand. I've been young, even like the Virgin Records back in the day where I used to pick up 12 inch records for when I used to DJ, um, it was always a great experience walking into one of those stores. Yeah, and it's, it's really the ethos of the brand, right? I mean, look, Richard Branson loves to have fun, so he kind of passes it down to everybody. But what we have, you know, we go by what we call our tone of voice, right? Our tone of voice is fun, irreverent, cheeky. You know, we like to poke fun at the competition. They don't, they don't like it all the time, but, uh, you know, I got a couple of stories that I could tell about that. But, I mean, we always have a lot, a lot of fun at others' expense as well, but just in a way that, you know, is uh, – you know, we, we certainly, you know, want to embellish how much fun we have during the brand, how we treat our customers and our teammates and whatever else. And it's it's really contagious. I mean, Richard's attitude is really contagious. And one of the best things about working with Richard is he allows you to be yourself. So there you go. <laughs> there he is right there. This is this is yeah. the grand opening in Chicago. Yeah, that's what that's right. That was a lot of fun. And he was really excited to be there. So. And, and so, you know, is he part of the whole brand strategy as far as like, oh, we should be doing it this way because it's a lot more fun. Is that what happens when when he's involved? Well, what we do, you know, what we do is we all the all the CEOs of the different companies, you know, we make presentations to him and the broader boards of each company. So each board has their own company. Right. And uh, or each company has their own board. And then we uh, make presentations with him present. And, you know, he makes great comments and he, he makes great recommendations. And the truth of the matter is, is some we agree with, some we don't. He does let the CEOs run the business. He's always there for support if you want to call him. So it's just a great way to run a company and inspire others. You know, when when he says, you know, hire talented people and then get out of the way, he really means it. So <laughs> definitely very authentic. And while I, was, while I was doing a little bit of research on you, Raul, and, and the brand and the company, I saw this picture and I was like, whoa, what's going on over here? <laughs> well, look, I, he's, he's very jealous because he knows I'm better looking than he is. So he got very <laughs> jealous. And I, I keep telling him that. You know, he does that all the time to me. So, <laughs> Any fun stories? I know you, we were, before the show I said, hey, have you been uh, to Necker Island and some of the fun things that he does? Um, and, you know, that island yeah. got blown away with, during the hurricane. Um, tell us about your experience over there. I know you've been there. Well, you know, I've been there a couple of times and it's, it's, it's actually, I think one of the most peaceful places on earth. It really is. It's for anybody who has the privilege of going once in their lifetime or two, they should, you know, it's, it's just kind of a place that has this certain je ne sais quoi where, you know, you can really just be yourself, linger around, you know, Richard comes over, chit chats with you, does his thing, but he's amazingly competitive. So one day, uh, he challenged me to backgammon, and I had, I'd never played backgammon before, actually, honestly. And, of course, he really, really beat me really badly. So I couldn't stand it because I'm competitive myself. So I said, look, I'll meet you here tomorrow at, at, at dusk again, and I'll play you again. He said, fair enough. So while he went out windsurfing the whole day, I actually went to the uh, to the, the bar, and with one of the bartenders who's an expert backgammon player, I got some tips from her and I played with her for like four or five hours just to be ready. And sure enough, Richard shows up on time, ready to go at 6 p.m. We played again. He won, but we kept it close, though. And he said, well done. 
excellent. So that's a typical Richard Branson story. He's incredibly competitive, loves to have fun. Uh, just for the record, I wanted to put on the record that I did manage to manage to smash him in ping pong, though, and he wasn't <laughs> he wasn't happy about that at all. Uh, can you can you beat him in windsurfing? <laughs> Probably not, because he does it he does it way more frequently than way more frequently than I do, right? But. Uh, incredibly competitive in a good way. But I think that's what drives him is to drive the rest of us to just to do better, live life to the fullest. And that philosophy is pervasive throughout the organization, throughout all the different, you know, Virgin companies. Right, right. And I, I like I said, I've been following him on social media, Instagram, yeah. and all his channels. And I just see that his, his life is just, it's, it's like fun first and then business, right? Um, and yeah. I feel like that's, if you can do that and have a mix of a well-balanced life like that, I think it's, it makes like the perfect combination, right? It makes your, not a perfect yeah. life, but it, it makes a, a fun life, right? Yeah, and he said to me, he said to me one day, and I think hopefully people find this interesting, people, those of us that love the hotel business, he said, if you had a chance to run another virgin company, would you run something else? And I said, absolutely not. You know, I'm, supremely passionate about the industry. I've been doing it since I was 16 years old and I've been lucky enough to, you know, rise up through the ranks, have my own company and now be able to do this with Richard. And I think, you know, as we think about the industry moving ahead uh, and, you know, what the industry's meant for people over the years, you've got to think that, look, what we do is incredibly important. I, I, I just spoke to some students about this the other day and I said, you know, the industry we, we take care of people 365 days a year. You know, we're not doctors, we're not nurses, but we do take care of doctors and nurses. And for someone like me who travels, you know, over 120,000 miles a year every year, you have no idea how important it is to get to a hotel, whether it's one of my own or somebody else's, where you feel safe and secure and you feel that they're going to take care of you and you can call into your family and say, hey, I'm safe, honey, everything's fine and you can get your business done there. So I always try to tell our teams that, look, let's look beyond the pandemic. The hotel industry is not going anywhere. We're going to be back with a, we're going to be back with a, with a fervor, with new innovation and new ways how to do things and, 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 and for the future to avoid these situations again. But I think that we should be passionate about what we have because it's a great business. And it's probably, I think, the most diverse business in the world, in my opinion. So absolutely. And it's, you know, one of a business that never closes. And I always right. explain to my friends, we're on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And yeah. um, that's just our business and you have to be ready for it. Right. It's not like sure. you shut, you, you turn your phone off and you hide it away. And, and that's it. When you, when you're in the hotel business, we're right all the time, no matter what hurricane yeah. that, you know, that he went through when uh, at Necker Island or any of these other things that have happened when we are taking care of people, we're always on. And, you know, yeah. I want to learn more about your experience. And, you know, a lot of people that are watching or that are going to be watching this in the future are going to want to be like, hey, I want to be the CEO of a, a Virgin-like company in the future. Um, sure. So how do you get to become the CEO of Virgin Hotels uh, and kind of go through your experiences? What I have written down, you have you, you've owned your own hotels. You were the general manager for interstate hotels back in 96 or 93. Um, yeah. And so you know what we're all feeling and you know what it feels like when a staff member doesn't show up on time or yeah. it's a no call, no show. And you have to get out of your bed and go work that 11 to seven or go work that shift because that person didn't show up. Right. Or assist people in the housekeeping department when they're short staff, right? You've been through it. Also. I appreciate that, but kind of explain how you got here. Sure. And I, you know, and I'll speak to that for a minute first before I speak to how we got here. You know, it's like we're, I'm always saying to our, to our teams, look, you know, when we get a five star rating on TripAdvisor or any hotel does, do you know the sequence of events that really led up to that five star rating? To be able to get a couple of hundred people inside of a hotel to deliver one five star rating, how amazing that is that we all come together to produce that. Because remember, it starts the moment that your customer goes on the website or calls in for a reservation. And then it really ends when they check out, maybe after they check out, you know, when they get their bill, right? So there's a, there's a hundreds of steps to deliver that. That's why I think we should all be proud of the service that we deliver in this industry, especially when we go out of our way and we get recognized by our guests. Uh, I just think it's, it's, it's really important for people to hear that because a four or five star rating on TripAdvisor is, is you know, just so incredible for us to accomplish it. But Look, I'll, I'll tell you what, what's worked for me, and hopefully it helps everybody else. But, you know, I learned early that I wanted to be in the hotel business simply because I wanted to be a general manager. And I started off as a, as a busboy with my father and as a dish person, like many of us in the industry. And I really wanted that job because uh, 
I saw the general manager come in every day, have breakfast and lunch, sign the bill. And I said, this is a great gig. I'm going to do that. And I didn't understand the job, but I, I did set goals for myself my entire life. I set, I actually set timeline goals. And I, I, I thought, what do I need to get there? So back when I was growing up in the hotel business, you know, if you didn't have a food and beverage background back then, man, it was very difficult to become a GM because most of your awesome general managers were European trained food and beverage wise and what for. So I actually left the rooms department and, and took a, a pay cut to go into food and beverage just to learn. And that was probably one of the best decisions I ever made. But all along my career path, I've had goals. I said, I'd, I'd like to be a general manager by this time. I'd like to do that for a certain period of time. I'd like to be a food and beverage director. I'd like to be this, I'd like to be that. And I, I took steps along the way to make sure that I got there. One thing that's really helped me a lot during my career is, and trust me, I needed all the help I could get, was mentors. Wow. I actively sought out the right mentors. I, I let people know, look, here's what I'm looking for. I didn't, I didn't stalk anybody. But, but when I had that five minute elevator pitch to let somebody know in authority what I wanted to do next, I did. And you'd be surprised how people come to the rescue. They re it may not happen at the moment. And that's why the value of networking is so important and is continuing to network consistently over the years, not just when you need somebody, right? But I found that over the years, I had lots of people help me take the steps that I needed to do to get to where I wanted to go. And that's actually how I wound up with my, you know, running my, my first company and owning my first company with Richard Millard. And we, we saw opportunity and we took some risks, which is another part of the story that we can talk about. I've always been, always been a bit of a risk taker. Uh, and I thought if you don't, if you don't, you know, take a risk, you must be, if you don't take any risks, as the founder of Ikea said, you've got to be asleep <laughs> if you're not taking risks, because in, in business, it's, it's fairly critical. But I, I did meet Richard Branson, actually, through a company that I had helped create, which was Desirous Hotels. Richard actually stayed at one of our hotels, the Betsy, fell in love with it, uh, the Betsy on Miami Beach, which was an awesome hotel. Yeah. And, and that's how I met Richard, you know, through that through that company and through networking with someone who was running the hotel. Interesting. And then when, and then he just said, hey, I want you to come aboard because you're I love this experience. I wanted to do this on this other level. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. He actually we met briefly for about 30 minutes and I was pretty happy with my company. I owned a big chunk of it and we were doing well. This is about this is around 2008 before the crash. And uh, he actually said exactly that. He said, look, we're launching Virgin Hotels in a couple of years. We're going to be looking for somebody. Uh, would you be interested? And I was flattered because I just met Richard Branson. <laughs> now, this is I said, this is I couldn't I, I, I didn't even know what to say. So I said, uh, you know, thank you, Richard. I'm, I'm honored. And, and let me think about it. And I'll be back in touch with you and your team and, and what for it. But it wound up happening exactly that way about two years, two years after that, when I decided to sell my company back to my partner and then move on to, to Virgin. Right. And let me stop you right here. This is the moment when people do not take the next step, right? I feel like a lot of people, this, yeah. they get opportunities come their way. And this is myself included where we let it pass. So you could yeah. have said, hey, you know what? I have a comfortable life here. I'm making this much money. I'm doing this. I have That's this right. experience. And this is the moment. This is like the tipping point, I call it. A lot of people call it where, yeah, you can go and now shift your entire life into this thing that you are doing right now or just continue because you wanted to be in the comfort zone of what you are already doing. And I feel like a lot of us, like I said, including myself, have yeah. these opportunities come to us but if we didn't go out there and say, you know what, I'm going to take it, even if I don't know everything about running um, a major hotel like Virgin, right? And were you scared? Because I think that's what stops all of us. Yeah. It's that fear. Actually, this time I was excited, but I, I'll tell you when I was scared, you know, I was, I was aspiring to be that general manager when I was young, right? And I'd been with, a, with an awesome company that was around in the 90s called the Continental Companies. And I... Um, you know, I wanted to be promoted to become a GM and they wouldn't do it. I'd been there for a long time and I was kind of their favorite son, but they wouldn't make the move. Somebody came along and offered me a job, somebody who I didn't know very well to become a, a, a general manager of a hotel somewhere. It was actually in La Jolla in San Diego, which I had never been to. And I said, you know, let me just take a chance. I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? I, I've done a great, these guys will take me back if it doesn't work, which I assume they would or whatever else. But, yeah. you know, a lot of people told me don't do it. And I, I, 
I made the leap anyway. I just had confidence and made the leap. And then I never looked back, actually. After that, I had a great career with that company for the next five or six years. And that was Lane Hotels. But I do think that, you know, when an opportunity comes along, I think don't don't be afraid. You know, have conviction and courage and, and believe in yourself. And, you know, you don't need to do every you don't need to know everything to take that next step. It'll be fine with the skills that you have and you'll learn along the way as long as you're open to doing that. But I think, you know, fear does hold people back so much. And I just in my case, I've just taken the leap sometimes when the opportunity was there. I wasn't looking for it. It just happened. I said, let me just do it because you never know if it's going to come around again. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, you know, I think that's even stopped me in the past where yeah. I had a situation to come and then I said, you know what, uh, I don't want to do it because I'm really comfortable here. But right. that really changed the way I, something in a portion of my life, right? And I think that happens a lot. So I, I appreciate that. I, I'm sure a lot of people that are watching uh, do appreciate that message because we live in fear all day long. Every single day, things are stopping us from moving forward. Things are stopping us from reaching our goals that you have. And I wrote down goals and I circled it because I think we're going to come back to that. It's important that we write down those goals. And did you have it written down or had it in the back of your mind that you just constantly thought about? Yeah. I, I didn't, I don't think, I don't think I really went as far to, to write it down, but I, I was fairly, I, I knew the timelines though. You know, I said, look, I, one of my objectives was to be, become a, a general manager before I was 30. That was like something I had in my mind. And I kind of knew the steps to get there again, food and beverage side of it went forth, but I, you know, and then I, I wanted to own my own company or be part of a bigger company by the time I was 40. And those are the kinds of the goals that I had. But I knew along the way, though, the skill set that I was lacking in my mind. So to, to get back to how you get there, I mean, three words, and it's all the same word. Learn, learn, learn. I, and that, that, that can mitigate any risk or any fear that you may have if you just, you know, continue to learn as you go along. And even, you know, learn things that, the, the things you want to learn are the things that make you uncomfortable, you know, yeah. and you know, when I'm, when I'm speaking a lot to our teams at the hotels, I always encourage, you know, a lot of people sometimes have difficulty with finance. They don't understand it quite well. They can't understand the finance. And I said, those are the things that will make you so much stronger in the future. If you get out of your comfort zone and, and learn that piece of it, and, and that'll make you a lot less you know, scared when you're going to make a leap. Because I, I think most people that have been incredibly successful will tell you that they certainly didn't know everything. Uh, you know, when they took the job. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I see that every day when I talk to, you know, yeah. like yourself, like you don't know every single part of the hotel and it's okay. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. There's hotel managers that are running their hotel super yeah. successfully. They don't know every single thing, but guess what? They know enough that they can make smart decisions and they can hire people on that know a little bit more than them. Like you said, Richard said, to bring people on and then get away from them so they can continue their job. Yeah, no doubt about it. Absolutely. So, all right. So you you got hired on uh, to kind of launch a brand that was brand new. Didn't kind of didn't have yeah. a, a like had like a vision, but really it was nothing was set in stone. So how did you make that possible? Well, it was very tedious. It's 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 quite a funny story actually. I thought you know when I when I joined Virgin, I assumed that the work had mostly been done, and all we had to do was launch. But when I actually took the job, I found out that it really was just a wonderful PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> so we had to start from scratch. We had to create everything from the wireframing for the technology, the consumer journey, the employee, the employee journey, the corresponding operational procedures to support those. You know, what was our point of view on so many different things, social impact, sustainability. So we, we created the company from scratch. So a lot of, a lot of people said, well, why aren't you guys doing, why aren't you doing hotels right away? Why is it taking so long? And, what they didn't understand is that what we were in the creation stages for the first two years at least, just putting it all together, pouring over documents, endless meetings, you know, a point of view on the design. What was what was the concept of the company going to be? How was it going to be different, right? And you know, you have a world class brand on your hands. You have to be very careful that you don't make a mistake with this world class brand and then launch something that people go, oh, really? You know, is that it? So a big, you know, big validation for us of the brand was when two years after we launched Chicago, the Chicago Hotel was named number one in Condé Nast in the U.S. and number six in the world. And that was incredible validation. And then from that point, we really, you know, started to sign new agreements and do new transactions and so forth. That's cool. And so you it's been how many years since you since the first one launched? It's been five years since we launched the first Chicago Hotel. 
And now, and you know, and then after we launched, that's when we started getting inquiries relative to, you know, new properties and what fourth and whatever. And there's now about eight or nine that are supposed to open in the next 24 months. And again, we're still signing, we're still signing deals and, you know, figuring out how we get them financed and whatever. But I do think we're going to have lots of opportunities because uh, I think there's, there'll be some brands out there in some hotels that have reached some level of obsolescence that'll want to change brands to something that's a little bit newer, fresher, and more in tune with today's consumer. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you're doing this pip, that's going to cost you millions of dollars. Yeah. Might as well make it a little bit fun and might as well change maybe the way they're operating. And maybe you can pull out a niche or niche out of this market that yeah. nobody's doing this one, this fun thing that, that Virgin is doing. Um, yeah. Although I've never stayed at a hotel, at a Virgin hotel, I would love to. And I, and I'm, I, I, I hope you invite me to the, the, the Vegas one because that's a, that's a fun city to kind of have a grand totally opening well. at. You know, they're, I mean, uh, I mean, they're all fun. I mean, look, they're all grounded. There's two they're principles. One is that uh, music and entertainment is a big, big piece of what we do. So they're heavily activated. Uh, and our consumers, you know, love this event where there's like music and entertainment going on or something entrepreneurial going on at those hotels. And the other piece of it is it, it feels like it kind of feels like a member of the place. So when you when you join and you sign in with our with our app. The app gives you like little insider deals. Like you could be staying inside the hotel and all of a sudden you get a notification on your app that says, hey, uh, Chef Looney wants you to come down to the kitchen and try out his new menu between 8.30 and 9.30 tonight. Are you available? So select customers get called out or whatever. So it feels like a membership experience. It isn't, but that's kind of the, the feeling that you get inside the hotel. That's cool. And so how do you kind of build this engagement? I, I love that, you know, you're making these personalized connections with the guests that yeah. are building loyalty that's what you're doing you're really building loyalty and you're then having those guests say oh my god i had an amazing experience i'm definitely going back to this hotel but when i consider staying at a hotel it's going to be the virgin brand because of the experience that they receive um how do you come up with these ideas because we would well, love because here's what here's my thing i love yeah. to take ideas when i walk into any business especially restaurants and hospitality, where I say, you know what, they're doing something a little bit different. How can I think about implementing that uh, into my property, including like the receipt when you go to a grocery store, what they do or any, any place where you buy something, the receipt has a lot of marketing that they do that could you could implement or the way they made you feel. How are you guys doing it differently at Virgin? Well, I, I think, look, it, it's, it's a journey, right? I, I think there's lots of ad hoc ideas out there that people will put into place and they stay in for a while, but they kind of go away. But the way, the way we look at the world is, you know, we have three words that we use a lot. Point of view. What's our point of view on this? So whether it's the consumer journey or the experience on property or whatever else, nothing that we do that's I think they support it. There's a that we never, our customers just say, forget it. that's perspective. The concern is something that has to be tedious and well thought through, but you have to get lots of info from your customers before you do it. And again, during the first few years that when we launched the brand, uh, that came to, to terms with some of the ideas that we had, whether they were going to work or not. But how we activate the hotels now is, is business. there's a focus on preferences. Our thought process is that uh, loyalty is great. Points are great. The experience in the hotel. So that's a little bit of a difference from us and maybe some of the other companies. So again, it's part of the membership program that's called the No. Uh, you know, you have discounts in F&B while you're there. You have special activations throughout the hotel while you're there. You have special invitations while you're there. Come back in the future. So that we're focused on the existing stay, not the future stay. We've got you here now. Let's let's entertain you to make sure you come back. Let's delight and surprise you. Yeah, absolutely. So, that's fun. That that it makes it makes the staff that's working feel great too. That they're having a great time. Now we're yeah. talking about hospitality leadership. What are some of the things you guys do? That's maybe not your secret. Oh, maybe your secret sauce that you guys uh, implement to keep everybody motivated, keep them resilient, keep them going. Because right now. People are like, am I going to have a job here in the next six months? Or, you know, I don't know what my future is in hospitality. So how, what do you guys do at Virgin that keeps them fresh, entertained, happy, uh, motivated to come to work? And how can we take those ideas and kind of implement at any property or any business? Well, I, I think we, we lead with purpose, right? So uh, 
this is kind of an interesting analogy. You know, we it took us a year and a half to the actual program for the company. And it was something that we actually worked on close to our board because our board is, uh, you know, it's a very purpose driven company. And so is Richard. So so the, the, this is what our purpose is. Our purpose is everyone leaves feeling better. So believe it or not, those four words, it took us over a year to come to, to terms that that was going to be our purpose. So how, how we do is we, we weave that that purpose statement into everything, whether it's the consumer journey, the employee journey, the, the investor journey with us, because we certainly want our investors to leave feeling better, right? And as, as you weave it as your philosophy into the operations on a day-to-day -day basis and having that be the barometer for the success inside the operation, whether it's leadership, motivation, or even financial results, we stay true to the course of being on purpose. Now, we use technology quite a bit to communicate with our team members. When we were launching the brand, besides doing the Lucy, which is the consumer app, we also developed our own internal app called The Beat. And The Beat is a, a proprietary app that we own that is uh, inside the hotels, only for people employed at Virgin Hotels. But on this app, not only can you stay communicated, even people that we furloughed, you can stay in touch with the hotel, but we, through the app, we provide, you know, training and all kinds of benefits for them that they can actually, like, you know, look, if they want to look up at their paycheck or anything like that, it's readily available to them. But also lots of fun training and motivation. That's how we keep in touch with our team hotel from home off to team furloughed, right? You know, we that app in touch with our team right right and all right good well uh, you know we, we want to keep everybody keep going and that experience is amazing at the hotel uh, what are some other things you could share that that virgin is doing differently than kind of the average hotel that makes you different that makes people say listen i'm only staying at virgin hotels or and, and did i lose you <laughs> Reinforce when we design the uh, is a thing. What you can do, is, I think. Did I lose you? I think you're, we're, I think you're, lo we're losing each other. Oh no, um, oh no. All right, I think. Uh, let's see, let's see. Can anybody here, guys, hit the comments and let us know if it's a little glitchy? Someone's saying it's a little glitchy. Um, it might be my internet connection or. I just be, can you uh, hear me now? Yeah, I can, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, comment, let us know if you, listen, guys, if you're listening, comment, let us know this, so far, the things that I've written down have been amazing from uh, Raul, and I'm loving everything. If you if you liked this so far, hit the uh, like button, hit the comments, and let us know you did, and you are enjoying this, and let's continue the conversation. If you can hear me. <laughs> I mean, look, the, the experience for us, what we decided to do during COVID was this. Let's focus on the core attributes of our brand right now. Let's, first of all, prove our experience to make sure that our customers really have a seamless experience. They don't have to come in touch with anything in the rooms. They don't have to touch the light. They don't have to touch the, TV, they don't touch the TV or the phone. It can all be seamless by the app. It's things that we were working on before, things that were accelerated, you know, with the app and the consumer experience. As a customer, you're going to get push notifications to your phone, letting you know of special experiences inside the hotel at the moment, happening like right now in the restaurant that you may want to be a part of. And that's part of our delight and thing. Our rooms were designed for the female traveler, female traveler in mind. It's guided by our door. Right now, during you can order room service while being in the room, whatever you do, but you drop off the the you find you're breaking up a little bit. I think you're breaking up a little bit. Well, let's let's, let's get some comments from uh, some of the viewers. They said the app is amazing. Uh, you know much more comfortable traveling with this technology. Um, guys, if you have any questions, please leave, leave them in the comment. And yeah, Maggie's saying it, that, you know, you, you created this experience from the female perspective, That's which is great because, you know, a lot of times uh, leaders are maybe males that are kind of 
creating all these things, but they yeah. forgot this whole genre of people that are staying at hotels and maybe they're staying by themselves and maybe it's safety, maybe it's the food, maybe it's the experience, maybe it's yeah. cleanliness, maybe it's just the way things are set up in the room. And I think you've covered all of those points and I think I just lost him. Um, I hope we can get him back on. Um, guys, comment, let us know. And guess what? We're still giving away a $50 Amazon gift card uh, before the end of this show. And guys, thank you so much. He's been, I, Raul's, uh, Raul's been I, awesome. Hey, rack, oh, there it is, much better now. Sorry, who knows? I was gonna say, look, but we the, the rooms, we the female traveler, gave us so many little details to be able to, all those focus groups to tell us what, you know, be very specific the rooms as well. You know, the, the, the shower is very thought designed in a way that's really for today's person where you can work and play in bed. But, you know, when you speak about innovation, talk about products and technology and all that. And, you know, some innovation is just addressing a consumer pain point. Example, you know, our mini bars, are, we don't nickel and dime people, they're at street prices. So if you want a Snickers bar, you're gonna pay a dollar, just like a 7-Eleven or something. That's one of the things that consumers find mostly popular hotels is that no resort, urban fee, no nickel and diming, there's no charge. And we think it's real innovation, not just the technology side of it. That's, that's awesome. All right. So we're almost done with this conversation and people said they've loved every single moment of this show minus maybe the connections that we've uh, all experienced. But guess what? This is what we deal with every single day in hospitality. Some days the, the whole section of rooms might be down for the internet. And guess what? Yeah. We don't stress out. We get over it. We get through it. We take our time. We are focused and we're not going to stress out about it, right? We're just going to take the proper steps and make sure that we have everything in line. And this is how we operate our hotels. And I'm sure, Raul, you guys operate your hotels the same way where, yeah, you yeah. want to wow us, but you don't want to stress them out because once you start stressing yourself out, you people ex can feel that stress, right? Totally, yeah. Well, thank you so much. And, um, I, I, I love the whole fun experience that you guys bring to the table. I cannot wait to stay at um, at one of your hotels, and especially I'm going to try to be there. And even if you don't invite me, I want to be there for uh, the, the you're opening. Welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome anytime. By the way, they're they're all equally as fun, and you know, but you're welcome anytime. Just let me know. Yeah, and I have fam family in Dallas, so I hope I get to stay at one of your hotels and. Sure. Uh, I apologize on, on behalf of my internet connection or whatever this is happening right now. Um, let's just blame it on the election and everybody trying to get online to see what's happening with the results of this election. Guys, comment and let you, if you have any questions for Raul or in, in their team, and um, I'm sure we're going to be able to get those answered. Raul, thank you so much for this opportunity thank to speak you. with you. And, you know, we talked about, here's what I wrote down, our goal setting, mentors, network, risk opportunity to take chances, employee journey, learn, learn, learn. And we're going to take that all to heart. We're going to take that back to our hotels to inspire our team. And hopefully one day we all get to stay at one of your hotels. Um, Mr. Okay. Leal, thank you so much. Thank you very much. It was an honor being here. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, guys. We're going to give away a gift card $50 gift card to the winner of this week's show. And, you know, this person has been on past episodes with amazing uh, engagement. And even the show that she's just been awesome on it, at it. Her name is Maggie Moran. Congratulations, Maggie, for winning the $50 Amazon gift card. Please send me a direct message and I will uh, send that to you today. Um, Guys, this was awesome. This is what we need when we're trying to figure out what's happening in our space and trying to figure out how am I going to make it through the holidays? How am I going to make it through Thanksgiving and, and some of the events that are going to be happening in the next couple months is all these things that we have to kind of keep focused on and stay in line and not quit because I could have quit a long time ago when uh, all these things that have happened in, in recently and in the past, I could have quit and said, you know what? I'm going to go try something else. But no, you know what? I show up every single day and that's what I want you to do too. Keep that drive going because that's what separates you from everybody else. It's that drive that, you know what? I'm not going to let all these things that are kind of maybe clogging my mind, but I'm going to keep going. And that's what it's all about, right? That's what hospitality is about. It's just keep going. So guys, congratulations to Maggie. Thank you so much for the opportunity for us to share this 
insights, these ideas with you. And guys, we'll see you next week where we bring, I think we're going live from a, a property. So uh, please tune in next Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. Guys, hit the like button right now to support this show. That way your friends and your connections see it here on LinkedIn and then share it with your entire team. Maybe they get inspired. Maybe they help you grow yourself and maybe you can help them grow themselves. Guys, thank you so much. We'll talk to you next week. And also don't forget, uh, connect with me on Instagram at um, my Instagram connect, uh, link. And then also uh, on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Rupesh live. I'll see you there. All the past episodes, all past 62 episodes are there for you to watch and inspire your entire team. People always say, hey, I'm having a meeting. I don't know what to share. Pull out five minutes, pull out 10 minutes of my uh, past episodes and inspire your entire team to keep learning, keep going, right? Uh, guys, thank you so much. I'll talk to you next week.